minister to seniors and tell the people that are the seniors, tell the people that have children that are school age, that know grandparents, just keep talking it up and you'll find that that's the absolute best way of building this ministry. As your ministry team pulls together, you need to identify who the seniors are in your midst. Take a look around you. You might want to you might want to benchmark an age. You might say, okay, from 55 and above, we'll call those seniors. But then again, you may say, nah, let's start at 85. You know, <laughs> we just don't know. You know. So what you have to do is make that determination. That's going to be an individual determination for every organization, but you have to have a benchmark. You have to have a platform to start on, and you can modify it as you go along. Find out from your seniors who's responsible for them, who helps them. If they, if they need help, what do you do? Um, who's helping them? Do you know those people? Can these people get in, in quick contact? In a moment of panic, there may be seniors in your midst who don't have an iPhone. They'll automatically dial when you say, call my son. Not everybody has that. But you won't know that unless you ask the right questions. One of the things I'm, I'm thrilled that Rob has done this morning is to ask you all to fill out these, these forms. And, um, and after I'm done speaking, I'm going to come to each table and pick these up, by the way, so please make sure they're filled out. They're, uh, they're anonymous. You don't, need, you don't need your name on it. He's just doing a survey. Uh, but this is the type of information that will help you identify the seniors in your organization. Um, who sees your seniors on a regular basis? One of the reasons that I, that I started the program called Community Chaplains is because I realized that many, many seniors, a, a huge percentage, I don't know what the percentage is, but a huge percentage of seniors receive a free meal every day through Meals on Wheels. They receive some type of medical home visit, but what they don't receive is Christian fellowship. They don't have anybody who will come in and just listen to them or read the word to them. And that's part of ministry to seniors. We want to take care of them physically. We want to take care of them emotionally. But we more importantly want to take care of our seniors spiritually. That's where their strength to overcome physical illness comes from. Spiritual strength is what will enable them to overcome the issues of life that they're dealing with on a daily basis. So from a church body perspective, <coughs> that's just the ideal thing for you to do, is to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to these people and help them, listen to them, read to them. Vital information, again, where the seniors that you visit, where is their vital information? Ask them. People want to talk about who they are. We all do. It's human nature. It's how God made us. And so what you do is you ask. Make sure that if there's an issue, you know what to do. Do they have pets? Do they take medication? Be sure you know that information. Uh, do regular wellness checkups. Jacklins are great at that. Your ministry team to seniors is going to be great at that. Let's just go drop in on Mary Lou and see what she's doing today. I, I did that, and I, I dropped in on my mom one day. And she was sitting there in the dark. And I'm like... What are you doing? She said, I'm just watching the sun come up. Her building faced west. <laughs> and I said, what did you eat today, Mom? She said, yeah. I said, what you eat? She said, vegetables. Oh, my mommy? Vegetables? What kind of vegetables, Mom? Potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it was time to bring her home. And I brought it away with me at that point. It was, it was a week later I had her home with me. Because if you drop in on them, you find out what's really going on. So that's what I would, would recommend you do. These regular wellness checkups are important. And then always, of course, check on people after they've had a medical incident, uh, whether it's a hospital stay or whether it's just an incident or a bad fall. Just check on them. Um, one of the things that Knowledge College is working on, and I actually haven't even mentioned this to Rob, 
uh, because I was going to kind of spearhead it for you with you, <laughs> is a resource directory um, so that you have not only community resources at your fingertips, at your front desk at your church, but there's also going to be a place in there where you can add your church resources as well. Who do I call if my elder mother is in big trouble? Who do I call when I walk into the front door of this church? And right now, I bet you nobody could tell me. I'll call the pastor, yeah, no. You know, you need to have that ministry team in place. Who takes your seniors um, for rides when they have to go someplace? Is there a transport ministry here that works with the seniors? Just all those kinds of questions. Um, what about recreational opportunities? Do you take them places? Do they get to go places? These are all questions you need to ask about your seniors. And if somebody's stuck at home, like my daughter-in-law one time, she called me and she says, she left a message. She said, where are you? You didn't answer your phone. And I know you don't have a wife. <laughs> yeah. Check on her. Make sure they have a wife. If they need help, whether it's legal, um, Lynn Barrow is going to be coming up pretty soon to talk to you. He is an extraordinary attorney. He's an extraordinary man. And if you need someone who, who can come and talk to a senior, make sure they get the help that they need. Advocate for them. You know, the Rob has shirts that say paraclete. And I love those shirts. We need the advocate. Somebody advocates for us in front of the Father's throne. And we are so eternally grateful for his shed brother that positioned him to do that. And so what we have to do is make sure that we in turn who have freely received that advocacy, we return it. So, chaplains. What, is, what does a chaplain do? Um, a community chaplain, not, I'm an ordained chaplain, which is a whole nother ballgame. Um, but a community chaplain would be somebody part of a team in your church, would go out and do what they call the ministry of presence. Just be there. Sometimes just being there is all another human being really needs. And we see it day after day after day. Um, how's that different from, a, from an ordained chaplain? Ordained chaplains fall under some rules and regulations that you never will. Um, you, for example, you won't be a mandated reporter, although you should if, you, if something comes up and you see something you think is elder abuse, oh my goodness, report it. Absolutely report it. Take care of the people that the Lord puts in front of you. Um, how can you serve? If your church decides to go forward with this, with this ministry to seniors, how do you serve them? Number one, have a heart for Jesus Christ. Be willing to use that J word right out loud. Say his name. Speak his gospel. Speak his truth. Don't, don't knuckle under to people that say, oh, that's not politically correct. Yeah, well... Someday I'll tell you how I feel about that, but not this morning. All I'm saying is be bold. People need the boldness that his truth reaches to the clouds. So you need to tell the truth about who God is and how he has forgiven their sins and how very, very much he loves them. So it's an easy message that everybody wants to hear. So I would encourage you to join your senior ministry teams, share that good message. Um, receive the right training. As a person who's going to go out into the community, the very best thing that you can do for yourself is to receive training. That's, that's Rob's passion, is to prepare people to minister to seniors. So I would encourage you to continue finding out the training that Rob is going to be making available to you and to avail yourselves of it as you begin to, to get into this community of service. And uh, be committed to it. Don't be, don't be someone who says, well, yeah, I'll be there when I feel like it. I, I know too many people like that, that say they're gonna do something and then they just don't. Or if a, if a woman is, is not well, well, yeah, I'll try to get by this week sometime. No, Sam, I'm coming Tuesday morning at 8.30. Be specific. Put Put them first. Do you know, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Put them first. What do they need? 
what what would you want if you were the one laying in that hospital bed or if you were the one that had to sit at home alone all day long what would you want so um, let me explain some of the things that you'll be doing as as a, a community chaplain I just use that term for lack of a better one um, you are the demonstration of Jesus Christ on the earth that's who you are to these people you're a leader in the faith a lot of times when we are sick our faith is perceived as weak it isn't faith is faith but sometimes the battle is difficult remember the story about Moses and Aaron on one side and her on the other side every time they lifted his arms and supported him the battle was won it's a very strategic thing for us to do to lift our seniors up in prayer they have to have our support without support the battle is lost just ask Joshua every time those arms went down Joshua lost the battle every time the arms went up Joshua won the battle so I would I would tell you support them through prayer prayer is the single most powerful thing you can do when and only when you declare the Word of God out loud don't use prayer that says well I don't know if God wants me to feel better well of course he does he died so you could feel better he's your healer he's your Redeemer he's your strength he's the light of your life he is your hope and so you need to bring that to these people who need to hear it you need to be strong for them um, you need to be someone that these people can count on a senior or a person in confined care needs to have some stability other than knowing that they're going to get some medication at 3 o'clock in the morning they need to know that you're going to show up at 7 30 and pray with them bring them a cup of coffee sit and talk sit and listen so be committed to it and then these are the things that that chaplains need to know they need to know that you have eternal life don't be ashamed or afraid to say to someone I have eternal life and what does Jesus say eternal life is to know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent that's what eternal life is you need to tell people that and your part of the senior ministry is going to open up the eyes open up the hearts and create people's spirits to create the strength in their spirits know who God is meditate on his word pray for the people you go to draw near to them in prayer prayer is a very intimate thing to do with an individual and I would encourage you and it's so easy you just walk up and you just simply say Brian how can I pray for you today how hard is that everybody can do that so I would encourage you to stand in front of your mirror and say, Kim, how can I pray for you today? Smile at yourself. And then when you get out in public, then it'll be easy for you. So understand basic CPR. Understand basic first aid. No signs of elder abuse. No signs of dementia. Be prepared. And then take all of your boldness armed with the sword of the spirit go do it all right Brian, if you and lisa could pass these out one to everybody i'd appreciate it yes sir don't pass out pass them out okay uh real quick a couple things we're handing out uh a flyers for your church so of course flood my pastor here at First Baptist with these flyers, and I pray that, that we can start a, uh, well, I shouldn't say start, but rather enhance the wonderful ministry we have to seniors. Volunteers. Niggy, is there such a word? Do you like the word volunteer, Niggy? I love it. Okay. I hate that word. Somebody told me that we are bond servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We are not volunteers. So something Carol said 
was don't be lackadaisical when you're called to serve